Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about multiplexers, what they are, where you can find them, and how they work. So multiplexers are used when you're going from multiple inputs to a single output. Uh, you can often find multiplexers in the circuitry of CPUs and other complex chips when you're getting information from multiple sources but you only want to use one of them. This means that from 2 to the n inputs, we can choose one of them using what's called select bits. So for 2 to the n inputs, we need n select bits, meaning if we have two select bits, we can choose from four separate input values. So let's take a look at what that means. Uh, shown here is an example of a simple multiplexer or MUX circuit. It has four inputs, X1, X2, X3, and X4, and two select bits, W1 and W2. On the left, we can see a truth table which summarizes the output value Z given the input values for W1 and W2. We can see that when W1 and W2 are both zero, we will get X1. When they are zero and one, we'll get X2. One and zero, we'll get X3. One and one, we'll get X4. What we see here is a multiplexer that's a slightly more complicated version of the one we just saw. It still goes from four inputs to one output, but the logic behind it is a little bit different. This multiplexer just uses a slightly more complicated binary logic in its interior to come up with a little bit of a different output table. When I talk about the interior of the multiplexer, this is what I'm generally talking about. It's not a simple trapezoidal shaped box. There's a lot of binary logic gates involved to give us the output that we truly want. This is an example of the interior of the first multiplexer circuit that I showed you. Four inputs, one output using two select bits, W1 and W2. By following through the signals uh, coming from these NOT gates here, and following them up the channels to the AND gates, you can kind of work out what signals are required to get uh, the proper output on the Z channel. So what we have here is an interactive version of the multiplexer that we just looked at, drawn in a program called Logism. Uh, so this lets us change around some values and see how the circuit will actually perform. So if we take a look at our two select bits at the bottom, we'll notice that they're both zero. So this means that we're going to choose from our first input signal. As you can see, it's a one and a one. If we increment our signals to choose zero one, we get the signal from the second source. If we change the signal for the third, we get the third input. And if we change to the final gate, we get the zero. To show you that this isn't some sort of gate magic, we can just change this input here and see that the output corresponds to the given input. The next multiplexer circuit we're going to look at has two sets of inputs with two bits each. So we're going to need two bits of output. As we can see here, the input for one is one zero and the output is one zero because our select bit is zero. If we change that, the output changes to meet the input signal two. Uh, to illustrate that there's nothing really fancy going on here, if we change the input, you can see that the output matches it. The same thing would have happened if we changed input 1 and left the select bit to 0. That about wraps up our explanation of multiplexers, what they are and how they work. Hopefully this has uh, cleared up all, a lot of the questions that you have. If you do have any more questions, feel free to uh, leave a comment below or uh, message me, and I'll see what I can do to clarify your questions. Thanks a lot, and thank you for viewing.